back to ColbertRadio.com live. We are back for a, I guess you call it a political segment, but basically it's the guest segment because our guest definitely has a political bent to uh, what he's going to talk about. He's running for the 1st Congressional District. He's a Libertarian candidate. Mr. Keith Blanford, welcome to the show. This, sir, is your life. The next okay. several segments are your life, as a matter of fact, because uh, yeah. he's yours. I went ahead and prepared a political segment, and then I realized I was an idiot, because the show is pretty much political here. You know, here we on. all realized that I was when we first he, brought you on the show. It, it just, takes me a little while. <laughs> you just figured that out. It takes me a little longer than it takes you guys. Talk about slow on the uptake. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. So now that Percy's been insulted, let's go ahead and we start. We told him he was started it. for the you record. Started it. comic relief. Right. Start. It's good. You know, so, think of us as Jerry... Uh, think of us as Jerry Mark is Jerry Lewis. Okay. Jerry's, Jerry's kids, kids. You know, without all the talent. All right. So, would you like, since you're political director, you want to leave this off? Or no. Well, why don't you start off? <laughs> tell us a little something about the Libertarian Party. I have a question. A couple well, uh, questions. In, in this term, uh, the Libertarian Party platform. Mm. Um, now, <laughs> See, that's kind of a, a contradiction in terms, though, isn't it? Because yeah. every Libertarian kind of defines yeah, it's their true. own. It's true. Is that right? I think that, you know. Libertarians, if you want a base platform, you know, small government, less government intervention, less centralization of power, and live and let live. It can be as simple as that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and you'll find that, you hear me? I'm picking you up. I just want to make sure that we're okay. okay. Go ahead. And, and there is room. I think there's wiggle room in within the Libertarian platform to be able to form your own feeling, to form your own platform. And that's the beauty of it. You, know, you want to stay within the confines of there's a role for government and there's a role for society. And society should have more of it. And, you know, with, with, with that, I think there's been a lot of, you know, you can see different people and libertarians going a little left, a little more right. But there is, you know, that's a nice part about it. We actually are the one that does have the big tent. So you are actually, you know what? I wonder how Brooke feels about that. Brooke? <laughs> Do you have a... <laughs> you might be put on the spot. Well, oh, yeah. I, got, I have an idea. I like to hear what Brooke has to well, say. Well, it's because generally you're... you're your political beliefs subscribe to the other side of the aisle from most of us in the room, and especially from a libertarian who's, I guess, you can't really say left or right, just wacky. You mean those of us, those of us who have passed yeah, on I, mean, I don't reason. understand where that comes from. I, I don't think that wacky is actually the necessarily right definition. No, it's not. This is me being an ass. Okay. I was right. just, I was no, but it is a common thing that is said, and it's very clear that both political parties have a vested interest in keeping us out of the race. Well, sure. Absolutely. But no, I mean, so. Last thing they want is another party. That's true. <laughs> it's, you know, look at what Ross Perot and Ralph Nader have done well, in the two-party system. You see what I'm saying is, you yeah. can't build a barn without two nails and a chicken. What, that Ross, is Glenn Dorkman. That's a character he does on the stage. It's wonderful. No, it's that's actually true. Ross Perot. I'm Ross Perot. Oh, oh, Ross, <laughs> Ross Perot. Uh, yeah, we yeah, call him Brooke and then everybody instantly yeah. interrupts us. hear me? I gotta hear it. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you say. <laughs> well, at the last, at the um, debate or whatever we called it, the, um, Candidate interview. Yeah. Forum. If we don't let her talk, my sisters will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little discussion afterwards, and um, I had said that, or made a comment that South Carolina politicians scare me, and you know, I, I just the whole idea of getting rid of the Department of Education. I mean, our schools and suck as it is. That's a problem because. That getting rid of the Department of Education, the federal one, would be, I think, completely detrimental to South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina sucks as it is, but to take out the every computer federal... in South Carolina just slapped itself shut. <laughs> Good thing there's only three of them. <laughs> right, so I'm not condoning that message. <laughs> <laughs> We here at the Blame Our Campaign are not supporting or endorsing the other. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go. All right, so let me let me stop right there. Okay. Right there. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. talk about the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. All right, I go in and, you know, I'm fairly broke. I don't have a lot of money. I go look at a, a Ferrari, and I really like that Ferrari. And I want it in red or I want it in green, but it doesn't matter because we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, with the Department of Education or dealing with the federal government education, it's why I talk about it because we're broke. And there's no reason to get upset about it or talk about the merits of it when we are printing money for everything that we do. So either we voluntarily end the Department of Education or it's going to end. Why not another program? Why Department of Education? Because, I mean, educating the future okay. is well, yeah. very important. But don't, and don't and you, your but face. Don't <laughs> In your face, Blanford. <laughs> yeah, but not, I, not just the Department <laughs> of Education. You're talking about now where we are. 
as a country, it's radical. You know, we are talking about you know currency collapse. We're talking about economic collapse. So it's not just the Department of Education. We're talking about changing our foreign policy. We're going to be changing our monetary system, the tax code. I mean, it's it is intense. And so, the Department of Education will be the last thing on people's mind when you're talking about a currency collapse. That seems interesting because all of the, even if I, I looked at the Republicans' platforms and stuff, they all want to get rid of the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. It's like none of the other. Well, well educated <laughs> voters don't vote Republican. You know why that this is. is. She I looked over at me and I'm going, I just. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Go on. No, I mean, it just seems like why should that be the first or the one that people specifically. Well, point out. Well, I think one of the things that's hard is when you start doing this, and this is what our job is, you know, ultimately we have to take this to another level and we have to find a way to unify around it. Everything that you think about should be in terms of economics. Everything should be where was the government involved and what's the product we've gotten from that. So what have we gotten from the Department of Education? How much does it cost? And in history, historical preference, outside of this country, what have we gotten from monopolies? You know, usually those are pretty poor. So ultimately, as we put in the Department of Education, our education system has actually suffered. Yes. You notice I waited till you call on me. <laughs> I just raised my hand. I waited till she called on me. Also, isn't there, isn't there a clause in the United States Constitution that states that no authority or powers not specifically enumerated in the Constitution is reserved to the states and the people? Right. Ooh, ooh, there is no on. authorization for a Department of Education right. in, the, in the Constitution for the federal government. You can make that argument. The, but but being in South Carolina, you know, we, we just cut to the quick and just say, oh, state's rats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> state's rats. Tant the man. So, I mean, what's the argument? You know, ultimately, can I see that constitution the federal there, government or even government itself has done a pretty poor job of the educational process, it seems. So has South Carolina. But how much have we <laughs> given, how much time. opportunity have we given to the market system to reintroduce competition? Competition, are you talking about the vouchers and no, stuff? I mean, we, all right, if we want to still about? keep it within the confines of government, yeah. Okay, you put in a voucher system, and yes, people will be competing to get people to come to their schools. So this, th they would have a vested interest in actually giving people a good education because they would get more money. You know, when you put in the profit motive into the educational process, then you get a better product. Competition always is, makes a better product. I mean, I see your face, but there is historical <laughs> precedent for this. I mean, it's you want to rephrase that, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I see I your expression. I think it was perfectly what a beautiful, beautiful face. What a beautiful face. I think it was beautiful. Face. Well, no, I think that there's not. You know, the problem is, is that we get these positions, and we're so married to our positions, and Whoa. it has something to do hey. with our personal identities. So when someone challenges that and says, "Look, this is not necessarily so," people feel personally threatened. So you know, you have to be able. To, we are in that much trouble as a country. I am dead earnest, and you'll remember me saying this. You know, and unless we start letting go of some of these things. Our country is going to go through economic collapse. It is the truth. And what is that? Is that co coinciding with the Mayan calendar? You know, I, I think that if you look at the volatility of the markets, are going to be up, down, up, down, up, down. And through the next three years, you're going to see it. we got to get back to this. Hold on. All right. Please keep where you are. Uh, we gotta, I think we got a break from this. We need a break. Or we okay. Lose. All right. We'll be right back with CorporateRadio.com where we'll keep Lanford and how the economy is going to burn. I thought you were a wonderful person. You did very good. <laughs> you did very good.